Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've had a character tech AMA, which I will summarize here with a load of the character tech team devs talking about the link between code focused programming and creative art. They're currently working on the character tech pipeline, providing the artists with the tools they need to achieve their visual goals. And there was a big old Q&A session going over um, armor and clothing and character customization and stuff like that. So um, let's start with armor and clothing. Any info you can give us on tattoos and decals for armor? There are two types of decal, our characters shader supports, stencil decals and diffuse decals. Stencil decals work similar to real life stencils, think screen printing or stickers. Stencils do minimal colour with a mask to determine where the colour is visibly projected. For more detailed art such as tattoos, diffuse details are required which provide a fuller colour and detailed spectrum. The challenge with this is they are projected through UVs onto the skin diffuse texture. This diffuse decal system requires material variants to support the extra texture slot. This can exponentially increase material counts. How to minimise physical material variants is a challenge we are continually trying to solve. Any update on the hollow skull helmet blockers? The initial blocker with the hologram helmets was related to the shader's original design, which was built for static objects or RTT, rendered to texture, projections. We tried it on skin files and it was unable to animate with the character's skeleton and rig. We decided to take the shader back to the drawing board and ensure it supports the needs specific to the characters. Will we be able to equip armor for our left and right arms separately? The armor is broken up into five items, core, arms, legs, hands, and helmets. There is no armor asymmetry due to increasing customization further can cause both texture memory and draw call implications, which we decided to avoid for performance reasons. Layered armor anytime soon? Question mark. Currently, there are no plans to do anything for this. Our armors and clothing adhere to a strict set of rules defining how they interact with one another. To allow for layering of these two systems will require a major refactor of those rules. Can we have the Squadron 42 Navy and UEE uniforms, please? Unfortunately, we don't decide what uniforms the players will get in the PU. I can say I worked on a few UEE uniforms and I liked working on them a lot. Procedurally generated clothing slash armor question mark? A procedural approach to spawning NPCs built on loadout modularity using a system called spawn closets is in the work. In addition, we are expanding the ship tinting system onto the characters to allow for color palette customization as well. What is the current status of animating the removal or putting on of our helmets in game? We are currently in the process of researching how best to handle helmets. There's a lot of dependencies from artwork to animation to UI. Once we have all the dependencies defined, we'll be able to refactor all of the previous assets to utilize the new tech. Will backpacks have exterior slots with visible content just like armor? Yes, we are planning on having physical components on backpacks, just like we do with armors. The backpack itself is actually going to get treated as an attachable to armor. Right, let's uh, take a look at some of the character and character customization questions and answers. Beards? Question mark. We do plan on including beards and other facial hair in the Persistent Universe at some point down the line. However, there are many things in front of it. Are you going to have a range of hairstyles from other cultures and peoples? New hair is coming to Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe. While we haven't had the opportunity to look into implementing any of these um, other hairstyles yet, this is definitely something we want to do. We want to make sure we achieve a good representation of different types of hairstyle in the game. Are we getting the ability to fine tune specific features for our characters in the DNA blending system or some other system that we can then go uh, deeper into customize our characters? As a general answer to this and other PU character customization related questions, we acknowledge the fact that the current PU customizer is limited in terms of usability and choice, i.e. face options, hair options, beard options, and other things. It can be considered a version 1 of the system, and whenever there's a V1, there's most likely going to be a V2, if and when it can be put on the schedule. The current PU customizer uses a very old system for drawing and interacting with the UI elements, since the new building box system wasn't ready by the time the V1 customizer was implemented. As a result, we didn't get the interaction model to be as easy 
easy and as intuitive as we had wanted. The quality of assets in there is not up to the same standards we can achieve internally by now. What lessons have you learned from players using the current character creator? We learned how important the heads are that make up the pool. The initial selection of heads were arbitrary without taking the customizer into account. Once the customizer was fully functional, we quickly learned the importance of having a variety of shapes since the customizer allows for interpolation between DNA head shapes like ears, eyes, nose. Having a bigger DNA pool has necessary benefits. The more heads, the larger the variety of options between the heads. Can you tell us anything about the progress on alien characters? No spoilers, but you've seen that we've worked on the Vandal. I can say our character artists have always been excited to work on creatures and aliens. Uh, let's move into some tech and pipeline questions and answers. Is there any tech in particular we don't know yet about that you could tease us a little on? Sorry, I can't post any spoilers, but as an example of the R&D that was done in the last two years is the new hair that you've seen in Squadron 42 that involved creating an in-house custom art tool to create the hair and a new shader in the game engine. What major tech or pipeline improvements are you most excited for to improve your work? The authoring of character assets uses a combination of traditional sculpt and baking for normal maps, which a shared PBR, physical based renderer or rendering material library to define the surface of the character using blend masking texture techniques. The authoring of the blend maps required a more intuitive visual workflow than the current Photoshop to engine pipeline. In order to solve this, we are implementing a substance painter uh, the Substance Painter pipeline for surfacing to allow for 3D painting while being able to visualize the final look of the character simultaneously. This is an exciting pipeline improvement for the artists to now allow for a next-gen texturing system to match the next-gen authoring workflow. We had a mighty long answer for our last question as well. Any news about the cloth attack animation we saw in CitizenCon 2018 for characters? Hold on, because this is a long one. The V cloth, the vertex cloth simulation tech is a great example of priorities shifting over the course of production, which is perfectly normal in game development. In the case of V-Cloth, the successful rollout of the feature depends on three main pillars. The basic cloth solver needs to be implemented by our physics team, needs to have all the core features like tweak all dynamic parameters, collision, self-collision, etc., and needs to run fast enough so it can be applied to a reasonable number of characters simultaneously. Apart from that, it also needs to be robust and stable in the sense of not exploding due to an extreme acceleration that can often occur from one frame to the next in the context of games. Lastly, it needs to support the needs of tech art and content-centric teams and give them full control over how the cloth behaves and how it looks and feels under the drastically different conditions you'll end up seeing it in, from FPS fights to slow-paced hero cinematic close-ups. An efficient pipeline between DCC, Digital Content Creation, Applications such as Maya and our engine needs to also be established as well as tools on the DCC side that will allow for efficient setup and markup of simulation assets. The sheer number of assets in our game requires these solutions to be scalable since once the tech comes online, most existing assets that are deemed worth it anyway will need to be moved over, i.e. all the current assets that use the old pendulum sim system for hanging cloth and swinging things as you're running around uh, and then some. Good tools and pipelines glue everything together. It's where our productivity lies. Lastly, the assets themselves need to be there and need to be suitable for simulation in terms of how they were built and their structure. If you model, say, some trousers that are rather baggy, you'll find they end up looking pretty bad and unnaturally stiff, rigid in the game if they don't have sim because the solver and pipeline aren't ready yet. But if you need the outfit for an upcoming release, you'll likely concept and model them with a tighter fit so the deformation and movement will match the expected behavior in motion. However, once the Beacoth tech does come online, you'll obviously want assets that then allow it to shine and look super cool. You'll want the cloaks and trench coats and cool leather jackets and all kinds of dynamic attachments for them. You'll want players to want to take off their armor in landing zones because it looks 10 times cooler and more individualistic. But it's all dependent on 
the solver and the pipeline being ready. At CitizenCon 2018, we were at the point where we are only about halfway through, but the initial results already looked so excitingly cool and promising that we wanted to share them with you. What happened then is simply game development. The same physics wizards that can give us fancy cloth solvers for cool looking assets are also the folks that implemented some of the core features of our engine, which are the foundations for actual gameplay. They work, i.e. on physics grids and spatial query acceleration structures, which keep track of where objects are in space and whether they collide, are hit by projectiles, etc. They are a core component of all AI pathfinding logic, without which all AI, both NPC ships and agents, would not have any awareness of their environment whatsoever. Nothing that could even trigger a behavior and action in the first place. They would just typos, even outside of server performance being an issue, and I guess nobody wants this. So, in this case, progress on some of the most fundamental systems our games are built upon was prioritised over the cool, shiny stuff for more than two years. As much as the visual tech nerd in me that hand-optimised the convict.sys and autoexec.bat files on his DOS PC in the 90s in order to see the fancy additional effects this enabled in the early Wing Commander games, as much as this part of me would have loved to have bring you V-Cloth on characters by now, the other part of me that wants to see the game come together and Chris's vision realised is fully convinced that this is exactly the right thing to do. And to be clear, we've obviously already tried to clone our physics peeps in order to speed up the process, but it didn't quite work out sadly. That said, work on VCloth has been picked up again and will continue, gameplay related physics duties permitting. It's a highly complex technical challenge and we look forward to sharing more visual tangible progress with you at some point. Bear in mind that not all the teams that take part in this initiative are currently represented on the public roadmap yet, which is due to get changes. Right, that's it for a summary of that character tech team stuff. I'm interested to know what you think. Are you excited for different armors coming into the game? Are you looking forward to deeper character customization? Are you still desperately wanting that hollow skull helmet and that we were promised a long time ago? I mean, that shade that is pretty cool. What about beards and facial hair and hairstyles? You're like, yes, give me them, but when are we getting them? Well, we don't really know. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming to Star Citizen, but um, obviously, and we can only really rely on what's on the release view to an extent, at least to see the priorities and uh, plans for Star Citizen in the short to medium term. But I'm interested to know what you think of what we talked about here and what you want to see in the future. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I'm a massive NordVPN shill. Zin somehow represents shilling on the screen. In the current climate and modern digital age, you want your spaceships and internet browsing histories to remain yours and yours alone. I don't want some guy, let's call him Big Jake. I don't want Big Jake to see what I've been looking at. I don't want to even keep a record of what I've been looking at. No stealing my credit card infos. No, 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 no. NordVPN provides protection, and anonymity, and anonymity, and it makes you anonymous, and accessibility to the internet, and if you are looking for a VPN, consider it, because it's also cheap. We use the links below for discounts and deals. Every month we have a ship giveaway and March is no different. We're giving away a trio of ships, one each to three lucky winners. This month with a Origin 100i, 125a and 135c, all with game packages. Zin, have them flying around screen. <laughs> All you need to do to be in for a chance to win one of those is comment on any of my videos made throughout the month. More details down below in the description. Please remember to like, subscribe and share the video, tickle the bell, whatever that means. It helps grow the channel and helps us make content more regularly. If you would like to further support the channel, please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button below the video. You'll get some exclusive content each month as well as a badge and emotes to use in your comments. There's also Patreon and direct donation links too. It's all down in the description below. Click it, all of it. All of it. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great march and roll on Alpha 3.13. Say thanks for watching, Zin. Thanks for watching, Zin.